welcome back. In this Black Excellence presentation, we will highlight the first African American players in the NBA. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we share Black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. In 1950, three African American basketball players trailblazed their way into the NBA, defying racism, discrimination, physical harm, and even death threats. Earl Lloyd, Chuck Cooper, and Nat Clifton were the trailblazing trio who helped rewrite history and redefine the face of the NBA. And now thousands of African-American athletes have followed in the path of these legends. Great players like Oscar Robertson, Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, Julius Irving, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James. And let's not forget Cheryl Miller, Lisa Leslie, Cheryl Swoops, Cynthia Cooper, Tamika Catchings, and Candace Parker. They all have made tremendous contributions to push the NBA into the global phenomenon and billion dollar business that it is today. However, we must pay homage to Lloyd, Cooper, and Clifton, who took the giant leap to break the color barrier in professional basketball at a time when it was simply the unthinkable. Today, the trio has since passed away yet the legacy they left behind will live on. In this original Black Excellence video, we will be featuring the three African-American basketball players who pioneered the NBA. So without further ado, let's get started. One, Earl Lloyd played basketball at West Virginia State University on scholarship. Earl Francis Lloyd was born in Alexandria, Virginia on April 3, 1928 to Theodore Lloyd Sr. and Daisy Lloyd. His father worked in the coal industry and his mother was a stay-at-home mom. Lloyd began playing basketball under coach Louis Randolph Johnson at Parker Gray High School and graduated in 1946. Despite attending a segregated school, he excelled tremendously and received a scholarship in 1947 to play basketball at West Virginia State University, home of the Yellow Jackets. He was nicknamed Moon Fixer in school because of his huge size and was known as an exceptional defensive player. He was named All-Conference for three years between 1948 and 1950 and was also awarded All-State Virginia Interscholastic Conference twice. Lloyd led West Virginia State to two Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association CIAA Conference and Tournament Championships in 1948 and 1949. As a senior, he averaged 14 points and 8 rebounds per game while leading West Virginia State to a second place finish in the CIAA Conference and Tournament Championship. Lloyd graduated from WVSU with his BS degree in physical education in 1950. 2. Lloyd was drafted into the NBA in 1950 by the Washington Capitals. After his college playing days, Earl Lloyd was picked in the NBA draft in the ninth round with pick number 100 to play for the all-white Washington Capitals. On October 31, 1950, Lloyd rewrote history amongst contemporary African-American NBA players as he became the first African-American to play in an NBA game when he played against the Rochester Royals. Although the Capitals lost the game 78-70, Lloyd scored six points on that historic night. Nicknamed the Big Cat, Lloyd would play only seven games for the Washington Capitals before the team folded on January 9, 1951. He was then drafted into the U.S. Army at Fort Seal, Oklahoma. While fulfilling his military duty, the NBA team, Syracuse Nationals, picked him up on waivers. Lloyd would have to finish serving his time fighting in the Korean War, but he would return to the States and back to basketball in 1952. In 1954 to 1955, Lloyd averaged career highs of 10.2 points and 7.7 .7 rebounds for Syracuse, who went on to win the 1955 NBA championship. Lloyd and Jim Tucker became the first African Americans to play on an NBA championship team. During his NBA career, Lloyd experienced a tremendous amount of racism as he was refused service multiple times. There was even an incident in Indiana where a fan spit on him. However, Lloyd persevered and throughout his NBA career with the Washington Capitals, 
Syracuse Nationals and Detroit Pistons, Earl averaged 8.4 points, 6.4 rebounds, and 1.4 assists in 560 games over nine seasons. He retired from professional basketball in 1960 at the age of 32. Three, Lloyd became NBA's first black champion and was inducted into the Hall of Fame. After he retired from playing professional basketball, Lloyd worked as a scout and became the first African-American assistant coach for the Pistons in 1968. Two years later in 1970, Lloyd was named head coach for their 1971 to 1972 season, making him the third African-American head coach after John McLendon and Bill Russell. After his short coaching stint, Lloyd later worked in the police department and as a school administrator for Detroit Public School System. Lloyd and his wife, Charlita, had three sons and four grandchildren. Lloyd resided in Fairfield Glade, Tennessee until his death on February 26, 2015. In 1993, Lloyd was inducted into the Virginia Sports Hall of Fame. In 1998, Lloyd was inducted into the CIAA Hall of Fame. In 2003, Earl Lloyd was inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. 4. Chuck Cooper played basketball at West Virginia State College and Duquesne University. Born Charles Henry Cooper on September 29, 1926, Chuck Cooper was the son of Daniel Cooper, a mailman, and Emma Cooper, a schoolteacher. Cooper attended Westinghouse High School in Pittsburgh, where he averaged more than 13 points per game in his senior year and was an all-city first team. He then played only a semester of basketball for West Virginia State College before being drafted to serve in the United States Navy in World War II. Following his service, he enrolled at Duquesne University, where he was an All-American, started all four years, and set the school record for total points with 990 in four seasons. During his time at Duquesne, the team had a 78-19 record and was invited to the then prestigious National Invitation Tournament, the NIT, twice. He was a captain for the 1949-1950 team, which was the first team from the university to be nationally ranked all season, finishing with a 23-6 record and ranked six nationally. Five. Cooper was drafted into the NBA in 1950 by the Boston Celtics. Coming out of college in 1950, Cooper actually signed and played briefly with the famous all-black touring team Harlem Globetrotters. However, on April 25, 1950, he became the first African-American drafted into the NBA when the Boston Celtics chose him with their 14th overall pick. He made his NBA debut on November 1, 1950 against the Fort Wayne Pistons. He played four years with the Celtics before he was traded to the Milwaukee Hawks before ending his NBA career as a member of the Fort Wayne Pistons. During his NBA career, Cooper played a total of 409 games, scored 2,725 points for an average of almost 7 points per game, collected 2,431 rebounds for an average of 5.9 per game, and initiated 733 assists for an average of 1.79 assists per game. As some statistics were not kept during that time, it is not known how many block shots, steals, or turnovers he had during his career. Six, Cooper was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 2009. After the NBA, Cooper spent a year playing for another all-black traveling entertainment team called the Harlem Magicians. He only played for a year and left the sport for good after injuring his back in a car crash. Cooper's life after basketball was notable for his level of commitment to social activism. He married twice, first in 1951 and again in 1957. His second marriage to Irva Lee produced four children. Cooper himself enrolled in social work classes at the University of Minnesota and earned a master's degree in 1961. Returning to Pittsburgh, he worked for and eventually rose to the position of director in several neighborhood anti-poverty organizations. He was named head of the city's Parks and Recreation Department in 1970, becoming Pittsburgh's first black department director. Later, he moved into an urban affairs post at Pittsburgh National Bank, where he spearheaded development and affirmative action programs. 
Pittsburgh residents of the 1970s and 1980s knew Chuck Cooper mostly as a member of numerous high-profile boards and civic organizations. He was inducted into the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame in 1974, and in 1983, Duquesne established a Chuck Cooper Award to honor talented basketball underclassmen. Cooper died of liver cancer at the age of 57 on February 5, 1984. One of the first black basketball players who blazed the way for all of today's African-American stars was elected into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame on September 9, 2019. 7. Nathaniel Clifton was a two-sport athlete who excelled in basketball and baseball. Nathaniel Sweetwater Clifton was born Clifton Nathaniel on October 13, 1922 in England, Arkansas. He was given the nickname Sweetwater as a boy because of his love for soft drinks. But since his parents couldn't afford to buy them, he would fill up bottles with water and pour sugar into them. His family would eventually move to Chicago, Illinois, where he became both an outstanding baseball and basketball player at DuSable High School, where he graduated in 1942. He chose to reverse his first and last names when sports journalists complained that his last name, Nathaniel, was too long to fit in a headline. Standing over 6 foot 7 inches tall and weighing 235 pounds, Clifton dominated his opponents while playing on the basketball team at Chicago's DuSable High School. His hands spanned 10 inches, and he could pick up and palm a basketball as easily as others might handle a tennis ball. In the city championship semifinals in his senior year of 1942, he scored 45 points, blowing away the former tournament record of 24. Clifton would go on to attend Xavier University in Louisiana, but would play only one season before being drafted to serve in the United States Army in 1943 for three years during World War II. 8. Nathaniel was drafted into the NBA in 1950 by the New York Knicks. After returning home from World War II, Nathaniel turned semi-pro, becoming the first black player to join the Dayton Metropolitans and then later playing for the all-black New York Wrens. In July of 1948, Clifton signed with the Harlem Globetrotters, the legendary African-American masters of razzle-dazzle basketball. The Globetrotters were at the peak of their fame and influence, touring the world and drawing thousands for exhibition games, at which they often defeated all-white NBA squads. Clifton was signed for a reported annual salary of $10,000, said to be the highest salary paid to a black basketball player up to that time. Still a talented baseball first baseman, during the basketball offseason in 1949, Clifton played for the Chicago American Giants in the Negro Baseball League. For a while, it wasn't clear which major league sports Clifton would play in first. While he continued to play with the Globetrotters for three seasons, he excelled in the Major League Baseball's farm system. By 1950, his performance with the Globetrotters, in particular his exceptional ball handling ability, led to his signing a contract with an NBA team. On April 25, 1950, the 1950 NBA draft was held. Clifton became the second African American player to be drafted by the NBA after Chuck Cooper. However, Clifton was the first to sign an NBA contract. Clifton played his first game for the New York Knicks on November 4th, four days after the debut of Earl Lloyd. Already 27 years old when he made his debut, Clifton in his first season helped lead the team to its first ever appearance in the NBA Finals, losing in Game 7. He was named to the 1957 NBA All-Star team, scoring 8 points in 23 minutes in the game. At age 34, he became the oldest player in NBA history to be named an All-Star. During his eight seasons in the NBA, Clifton averaged 10 points and 9 rebounds per game. He played in 790 regular season games and scored 5,312 points and collected 2,532 rebounds during his NBA career. Clifton was a capable scorer known for his big hands and exceptional ball handling ability, but he was more prominent in defense and rebounding, which is why he was usually assigned to guard the opposing team's best big man. 
9. Clifton was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame on August 8, 2014. In 1961, he was coaxed out of retirement by the Chicago Majors of the fledging American Basketball League. After the ABL folded at the end of 1962, the 40-year-old Clifton retired permanently. Clifton returned to Chicago where he was a taxi driver until his death. Clifton died at the wheel of his cab near Chicago's Union Station on August 31, 1990. Clifton's contributions to his community during his sporting career and after his playing days have been recognized by the Associated Black Charities of New York City. They have honored him by naming one of the Black History Maker Awards the Nathaniel Sweetwater Clifton Award. In 2005, the New York Knicks basketball team renamed their monthly City Spirit Award in his honor. The Sweetwater Clifton City Spirit Award is given to a member of the community who goes above and beyond his or her normal duties to make the lives of others in the tri-state area better. On August 8, 2014, Clifton was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. 10. Lloyd, Cooper, and Nathaniel are